Hello and welcome to iGame Over channel. This is a computer parts explained series and this is it guys. This is the last part. Today we'll be talking about network cards. Network cards or the type of add-ons that will connect your computer to the internet or other computers for example through some sort of router or directly. And there are two types of connections nowadays. You can have either a wired connection through a LAN cable or Wi-Fi. Your motherboard would have already come with at least one such connection, which is a LAN port, sometimes even two, and for most of the people this will be more than they will ever need. Some motherboards will even come pre-equipped or pre-bundled with some Wi-Fi modules, although this is a little bit slightly less common. So if you don't want to, you know, root the cables or you simply cannot run the cables all the way through to your computer, a Wi-Fi add-on card would, might be something that you would actually want to consider to have. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, there are certain motherboards that have two LAN connections. This is not common and it doesn't have that many uses that, let's say, mainstream user would have, um, would have had for but it does have its uses. So for example, if you want to connect two computers together via a bridge, or um, I don't know, you want to run and manage a LAN party at the same time, that might be very useful. Otherwise, um, I'm not going to be covered as much in depth because, well, the topic is quite extensive and, 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 and frankly niche. You can buy network cards in two forms, either as an internal add-on cards like you know sound cards or graphics cards or you can have it as a USB add-on so sort of something that connects via USB port and it's a USB dongle for example. On contrary to what many want you to believe there are actually no specific benefits to um, having an internal versus external um, say for example Wi-Fi card and therefore it's entirely up to you whether you actually have a space for it. So, you know, if you don't want to have yet another, you know, USB dongle sort of thing, you know, occupying your um, USB port, you might want to consider a, uh, an, an add-on card that will fit inside of your computer. And that definitely saves on some cables too, in many aspects. But there is one thing that you do need to consider when you make your network and it's that everything needs to be pretty even across the board. So for example, if you have a computer that has a 1 gigabit per second LAN and you laid out a category 6 cable, which is a 1 gigabyte per second certified LAN cable, but you were, I don't know, you didn't invest in a proper router, for example, so your router can only or has only 100 megabits per second um, LAN connector on it, then unfortunately you're going to be limited by that and all you're going to get is that 100 megabits per second. So if you want to get a gigabit network throughout, what you will need to do is you will need to uh, have a gigabit connection on your computer, a gigabit cable and a gigabit router. Wi-Fi on the other hand is a little bit different standards. Currently we have A, B, G, N, and more recently AC standard, although with A, B, and G, you know, they are mostly obsolete now. Uh, majority of the cards you're going to see and majority of the connections you're going to see are going to be either N or AC. Of course, AC being a newer standard, it's much quicker and it penetrates the walls much, much better. So, you know, if you can afford it, Definitely, I would suggest you go for AC. It is way more reliable. And similarly to your LAN connections, if you want to get consistent speeds and get most of your network via Wi-Fi, you have to have that standard across the board. So if your router is AC, but you have only an N dongle on your computer, well, N speeds is all you're going to get. This is less of an issue if you have a desktop computer because you can just simply swap out the, the USB dongle, right? Mm, it might be a bit of a problem if you have a laptop, although, you know, USB you can connect to a laptop too and it will work perfectly well 
albeit maybe not that comfortable to have it all the time connected since you're going to be well, you know, connected all the time to your computer, uh, to your network, right? And things get a little bit more, let's say, expensive if you're an, an avid gamer or an MMO because you really want to invest in a router that will be able to recognize your games and prioritize that traffic, right? So you probably are looking at the spend of about $100 or more if you want a really good gaming router. And the same will apply if you like to stream a lot of HD or especially 4K content across your network. Or if you have, for example, many computers connected because a little known fact, right? Cheap routers can only accept that many connections at the same time and then it be, they become either unresponsive or totally unreliable because they just don't have the means to cope with splitting the traffic efficiently between many computers. So for example, if you have, I don't know, a laptop or two laptops, I don't know, a desktop computer, maybe some sort of form of tablet or two, you know, mobile phones, etc. Don't go, I mean, do yourself a favor and don't go for a cheap uh, router because it's just not going to be able to handle it, okay? Spend, you know, at least $30, $40 for it. There are more, um, let's say, um, good things or more things to get with more expensive routers as well. Think, for example, they will have a USB port so you can connect your printer and have it, uh, you know, as a network printer without having to actually buy a printer that connects to your Wi-Fi. You will be able to, for example, connect your USB um, hard drive, for example, and share the files across the network. And everybody on that network that you will authorize it for will be able to access that hard drive. Um, pretty good for, you know, for example, smart TVs. If you want to stream uh, videos from your hard drive to a TV and you don't want to invest in, a, you know, NAS, for example. More expensive routers will also have better and quicker LAN connections. They will have a more reliable connection, more strong signal. They will penetrate through walls, you know. You will get not only 2.4 gigahertz, but also 5 gigahertz, which is, you know, generally more stable and, and, and quicker if you're not that far away from the router. And even more so, you will get much less interference with other, um, with other devices in your, in your you know, neighborhood even with your neighborhood, because think about it that nowadays pretty much everyone has a Wi-Fi and those signals collide. So your router needs to be able to work this out with other routers. So the, you know, good, strong router will be able to handle those situations much, much easier. So my advice for you, if you can avoid the cheap routers at all costs, they are false economy, invest in at least medium, range router as usual i'm going to post um, some you know useful links to amazon um, down in the video description so to cover some sort of you know a basic medium and a high-end range of routers as well as network cards and that is it we came to the end of our 10-part series about uh, computer parts explained i wanted to thank you for joining me on that and um, it's been a really fun ride. I really thank you for watching. And um, just so you know, this is not over yet. Um, the next series that will be coming out will be about Perval. So if you want to learn more about printers and keyboard and different mics and uh, screens, etc., etc., you're going to have a chance to do that. So don't forget to hit that like button, okay? Don't forget to share the videos. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for the updates for all the videos that will be coming out. And as usual, have a nice day and take care. Until the next time, bye.